In this chapter, we're going to talk about the design changes and the evolution of an RSA. So we're, we're going to go back in time and talk about how it started, the significant design changes that have led to more popular prosthesis nowadays. The reverse shoulder replacement was originally designed by French surgeons. And the French surgeons realized that a regular anatomic shoulder replacement can't solve all the shoulder diagnoses that we have. It's great for primary glenohumeral osteoarthritis, but it doesn't fix rotary cuff arthropathy, significant bony deformity, malunions, nonunions, revision surgery, poor soft tissue from any number of the above reasons. So they started to come up with the reverse shoulder replacement. How do we create a stable joint center, a stable pivot point so that the shoulder can still work. And, and that's the crux of the RSA. That's the, what the RSA is solving is it's creating a stable pivot point independent of the rotary cuff by biomechanically reversing the components. If you look at the original French design, it's very interesting. In my mind, I think of it as a true reversal of components. The ball goes on the socket, the socket goes on the ball. However, the natural shoulder has a big ball and a small socket. And what they actually did is do a small ball in a big retentive cup or socket. And what's interesting is that they put the center of rotation pretty much where an anatomic shoulder replacement would be, which is really at the center of the humeral head. And if you look at these early designs, it has a long lever arm or a long moment arm where the center of rotation is quite far away uh, from the, the glenoid bone itself or the fixation for the glenoid component. So in theory, the design was quite nice. However, the large moment arm led to glenoid component failure. And the next steps in design were basically reactionary. So if they wanted to reduce the rates of failure because of the moment arm was so large, then they had to medialize the component. They had to put the glenosphere right on the socket or really reduce the moment arm altogether. And by doing that, you really uh, decrease the biomechanical shear or stresses on it and allow the component to stay stable and to survive. They increase the fixation as well and put screws as well as a post. Now, if you medialize the glenosphere component, the deltoid or the actual shoulder is at a relative mechanical disadvantage it's collapsed, so to speak, from a lateral to medial direction. And because of that, they basically had to cut the head at 155, or the neck shaft angle at a much more horizontal angle, in order to tension the humeral component. And they're distalizing or placing the component inferiorly in order to retension the deltoid. By doing that, they are able to recreate the tension and keep the tension that the shoulder replacement needs in order to function well. Medializing the glenoid improves the biomechanical construct to allow it to survive, but then you also have to cut the head at a different angle and place the arm distally to retain a moment arm or a biomechanical moment arm for the shoulder to work right, namely through the deltoid. The other secondary thing is that if you look at those components, the glenosphere becomes much bigger and the socket becomes much smaller, increasing the range of motion. So for this next step, from their original designs, it really improved a lot of things. However, as we'll see, it did create some subtle differences and some subtle issues that could be potentially improved. To summarize, we talked about the history of an RSA, the beginnings of its design in France, from failure to significant improvement with what we call a medialized design or gamont style design. In our next chapter, we're gonna talk about how an American influence took that medialized design and changed it to hopefully make it a bit better.